Hello and welcome again. We will study pensions in this chapter now, uh, which is very, very important. Uh, another very, very important uh, chapter of ACC F6 taxation. Now, pensions, uh, I told you a little bit about pensions in the uh, one of the previous videos, I think. Now, pension is the amount which is uh, paid when you get retired. All right. So, which is not paid by, obviously, government, uh, which you contribute if you want to. Now, say, for example, if you are working for Tesco and you are being uh, paid some salary. And when you're being paid some salary, out of that salary, you, pay, you took something out of that salary and you pay towards your pension. You went to the bank and you said, I want to make my own pension. And when you, when you went to the bank and you said you want to make your own pension, so they will say, all right, okay, how much you want and how much uh, you said, you know, say for example, 30,000 pounds. They said, all right, okay, you will have to pay 50 quid a month, uh, you know, for, say for example. Then you started paying 50 pounds every month until you get retired. All right, which will be you know at the age of uh, 55. Uh, now you cannot withdraw the pension uh, before the age of 55. Uh, so I mean you will keep paying uh, every month. Right now the pension which I just told you is a personal pension because you pick something out of your salary and you went to the bank and you were on, you were, you were responsible for that pension. All right, so you went to the bank and you said I want to make my own pension. Now, another type of pension, this was the personal pension, another type of pension is occupational pension, whereby what happens is that before paying you the salary, your employer deducts something out of your salary and to, uh, contributes towards your pension. Now, in that case, your employer will be responsible for your pension. That is known as occupational pension contribution. All right. Now, in, within the occupational pension contribution, one way is that you will pay now, employer will deduct out of your salary. Another way is that employer will pay. You won't pay. Employer will pay towards your pension. All right. So there are two types of pension. First is personal pension and other one is a occupational pension. Now, pension, what is pension? Pension is a simply the amount when you get retired, uh, you rely on that amount. So it is, uh, you know, paid in shape of income. Now, why government says that uh, why, you know, why someone would uh, pay into the pension anyway. So if say for example if I'm getting 2,000 pounds of salary a month uh, Then why would I pay something towards my pension? Why not? Uh, take the benefit now instead of you know at the age of 55 uh, the reason is that uh, people uh, You know people are willing to contribute towards the pension Because there is a benefit given by a UK government HMRC so that is the reason which encourage people to contribute towards the pension. We will see about the pension in details now as we now move to our notes. Right? So please open up your notes. I will just share the screen with you as well. As you can see on your screen, uh, chapter number 5, uh, page number 14, pensions. Now, there are two types of pensions. First one is occupational pension scheme and other one is a, a personal pension scheme. Now, I've already told you what the pension is. Now, these are two types of pensions. Now, occupational pension is uh, operated by your employer and personal pension is operated by your own self uh, through the bank or insurance, sorry, bank or uh, insurance companies. Now, the maximum contribution to pension scheme. So, every month, as I said, I can contribute whatever I want to, uh, but there is a limit. So it says maximum contribution to pension scheme. Uh, any amount can be contributed by the taxpayer himself or any other on his behalf. Whatever amount I want to, I can contribute. However, for tax relief purposes, for tax relief purposes, the maximum contribution that shall qualify for tax relief is higher of UK relevant earnings and 3600 pounds. So what happens is that I can contribute whatever I want to. However, for tax purposes, in order to get the tax relief, uh, I will have to, uh, you know, the maximum amount which will be relevant for tax relief, which will be eligible for tax relief, will be uh, UK higher off UK relevant earnings and thirty six hundred pounds. Now, please make sure you read it carefully and listen to me carefully. Uh, however, we will do a question as well on this in the next video. Uh, but please read it carefully so that you can understand the example which we are going to do in the next video. So what happens is that uh, you can contribute whatever you want to. Say, for example, if I am paid £2,000 salary a month, I can contribute 
50 pounds, I can contribute 1000 pounds, it's up to me. However, uh, for, in the maximum amount which is qualified for tax relief is higher of UK relevant earnings and 3600 pounds. All right. Now, when we talk about UK relevant earnings, what does it mean? UK relevant earnings include employment income, trading income, uh, and income from furnished holiday lettings. All right. Now, we will study about the furnished holiday lettings in the next video, in the next chapter, I think. Uh, then we will under, you will understand it in a better way. But for now, just take it as a, one of the property income. Uh, then in the notes it says if the uh, gross pension contribution exceeds the annual amount then there shall be a tax charge on the excess contribution by adding it in extra amount of non-savings income. Now for our current tax year, for our current tax year uh, from 14, uh, our, our current tax is 16-17, for our current tax year uh, annual limit is £40,000. So I can contribute £40,000 uh, towards the pension. Now for, our previous, for the previous tax year, 15, 16 and 14, uh, 15, the limit was exactly the same, which is £40,000 a year. However, the years before that, the, year, uh, the limit was £50,000. So for our tax years from 14, 15 to 16, 17, maximum I can contribute is £40,000. If I contribute in excess of that, if I contribute in excess of that, then that amount uh, will go into our income tax pro forma as excess uh, pension contribution and it will be taxable as non-savings income. I will show you in the next video as well while we do the uh, example. Same applies, to, uh, same applies to tax year 13, 14 uh, and previous ones as well which where the limit was £50,000. Now what happens is sometimes that uh, uh, you have contributed more than uh, your current year limit say for example in current year if I contribute 50,000 pounds then my limit was 40,000 pounds but if I, if I have contributed in excess of that that can be assumed to be contributed in the previous tax year so I can use the unused uh, unused allowance of the previous tax year uh, previous three tax year basically on the FIFO basis so that's what it says beneath that if an individual has unused annual allowance in any of the previous three tax years, uh, then it can be paid in the tax year 1617 uh, without incurring a tax charge. Uh, the annual allowance in the current year, uh, current year is treated to be used first. Obviously, uh, we will use the current year annual allowance first, uh, then the annual, uh, then the unused annual allowance of the previous three tax years uh, on the FIFO basis. Now the new thing here, tapered annual allowance, it is a new thing which is as added in the new tax year 16-17. Uh, so if you have studied this paper before as well, uh, you haven't studied this thing, it is a new, uh, new topic added. At F6 level, examiner won't examine this tapered allowance in much detail. However, you should be aware of uh, how it works. All right, uh, It will be examined in details in P6. So you do not need to worry about it in much details. So what happens is that uh, for our current tax year 16, 17 onwards, uh, normal annual allowance of 40,000 pounds, our current tax year's normal allowance is 40,000 pounds. So that personal allowance will be reduced, all right? Now the maximum we can reduce it to 10,000 pounds, but how can we reduce it? Now it will be reduced in the same way like we used to reduce our personal allowance. Now how we used to reduce our personal allowance? when our income was in excess of £100,000, we used to reduce our personal allowance. Now, same applies here, but the amount is different. So, our annual allowance of £40,000 is reduced by £1 for every £2 by which a person's adjusted income exceeds £150,000. Alright? So, if a person's adjusted income exceeds £150,000, for every pound, uh, for every £2 over £150,000, uh, our annual allowance will be reduced by one pound but the maximum we can reduce uh, um, maximum we can reduce our uh, annual allowances to ten thousand pounds now when it says uh, a person's adjusted income uh, in excess in, in excess of 150 thousand pounds uh, for our f6 exam we do not need to know what the person's adjusted income is because it will be given to us in the exam anyway all right now in the exam tip beneath that it says 
when adjusted income is in excess of 210,000 pounds or 210,000 pounds uh, then we will be eligible for 10,000 pounds worth of annual allowance all right so if it adjusted income is 210,000 pounds so 210,000 pounds less 150,000 pounds divided by 2 uh, it comes to 10,000 pounds anyway so if, if you're adjusted if person's adjusted, adjusted income is in excess of 100, 210,000 uh, pounds our personal uh, sorry our annual allowance for pension will be uh, 10,000 pounds now what tax reliefs we get while we put some money in our pen in our pensions why would someone contribute towards the pension what are the tax benefits for our occupational pension contribution, any amount contributed, any amount contributed by employee himself. So, if I, as an employee, contribute towards my occupational pension contribution, that will be deducted out of my salary, obviously. So, I will have less salary to pay tax on. Any amount contributed by employer uh, for myself will be an exempt benefit. All right. So, if my employer contributes towards my pension, that will be my exempt benefit. If I pay then that will be deducted out of my salary and I will have less salary to pay a tax on. Then it says a personal pension contribution. So if I make my personal pension contribution instead of occupational pension contribution, so if I go to my bank and I ask them to make my pension, what is my benefit? I only have to pay 80% and rest 20% is paid by HMRC. So if I want 100 pounds in my personal pension contribution, I will only have to pay uh, 80 pounds what I get is 100 pounds. So other 20 pounds is paid by HMRC. <clears throat> and another benefit is that uh, the basic rate band and higher rate band uh, will be extended by the gross amount of personal pension contribution. So that's what it says here. The amount paid by taxpayer, net amount, shall be grossed up 100 by 80, obviously, and the basic rate band and higher rate band uh, of taxpayer shall be extended by this gross amount. Now, what would happen is that when our basic rate band and higher rate band will be extended, basic rate band of income tax and higher rate band of income tax as well, which you can see on first page of your notes where we made the income tax pro forma, just beneath income tax pro forma, and there was different bandings. Remember, uh, them banding help us to calculate the income tax liability. Now, our normal basic rate band is from one pound to 32,000 pounds. All right, and now if we contribute Say, for example, if I pay 8,000 pounds towards my pension, and what I get is 10,000 10, pounds in my pension because of the 20% is paid by HMRC. Now, my gross pension country, personal pension contribution is 10,000 pounds. So that 10,000 pounds will be added in my normal basic rate band. So my, uh, my normal basic rate band before was 32,000 pounds. Now my basic rate band will be 42,000 pounds because that 10,000 of personal pension contribution will be added in my basic rate band. Likewise, a high rate band will also be extended by the gross amount of personal pension contribution. All right. So that is our end. Uh, that is end of our chapter of pensions. Uh, please make sure you read, uh, reread it and uh, then watch the next video. Now the next video is exactly the same example which we will do in P6 as well. So um, I will just record one video where you will be able to watch that lecture as well. Uh, that is a simple example uh, which is relevant to uh, pensions. All right. So please make sure you watch that video as well, which you will see in the next video. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.